Hello everyone, this is Jack the Rambling Raconteur, and I'm here with my awesome reading partner. And we thought since it's President's Day, it might be fun to do a bookshelf tour. I haven't done one of these yet, so we'll see how it goes. Um, but you'll notice we're not in the, the big home library office uh, with the big wall of books. This is in our guest room. We have a bookshelf in here, but it's the bookshelf that has our presidential biographies. And I thought that would be fun to do on President's Day. So first up, we have The Years of Lyndon Johnson Volumes by Robert Cairo, the first one, Path to Power. Okay. <laughs> and um, then I have all four volumes. Here, you want to hold this one? Daddy. So we have... Um, Daddy. Yeah. This is the front cover, and this is the back cover, and this is the spine. High five! That's right! So you want to show everybody the front cover of this one? Uh -huh. So this is Means of Ascent. And then the back, and then the... Spine. Master of the Senate. And... The Passage of Power. And uh, I've read all four. I read Means of Ascent, or Master of the Senate and um, Passage of Power That's not, as they came out, as they were published. And I, uh, I think Path to Power and Master of the Senate are my two favorite. I think I learned the most from those. Hey! It's okay. Um, Path to Power really shows a lot about the Great Depression and um, some of the New Deal projects that were going on. I... I I had taken APS history, but when I read that book, I really learned a vast amount, and it, it feels very personal as a as a biography, and it really is a history of the United States. There's a contention that, like certain operators like Julius Caesar, Lyndon Johnson understood how power could be used to affect change. For better or worse, you could use political power to create great change, and um, Path to Power and Master of Senate really emphasize that. Means of Ascent is really about a massive stolen special election. Smile, sweetie, what are you doing? <laughs> and um, Passage of Power it just deals with some parts where Johnson is not as involved um, until the Civil Rights Act uh, in 1964. So th those are the Cairo biographies of Johnson. We've got, you want to show this one? His Excellency George Washington by Joseph Ellis, who also wrote um, Founding Brothers and Daddy, a couple of others. That's right. If there's one, this is a good biography because it's not hagiographic around Washington. My one contention is it probably doesn't really do enough to emphasize his role as a slave owner and what that meant to have a, a commander in chief and. A, to have a commander in chief and then a president who is a slave owner. And yes, he freed his slaves in his testament, but slavery was terrible. <laughs> um, we've got the John Adams biography by David McCulloch. Great little bio. I shouldn't say little. Great biography. It's Adams is probably not one of our greatest presidents, but he's absolutely one of the greatest statesmen the U.S. ever had. Do you want to hold this one up? This is a really heavy one. Remember. So we've got A People's Tragedy, and this is a uh, history of the Russian oh, Revolution wow. by Orlando Figues. It goes from 1891 to 1924. Go ahead and set that one down. Which one do you want to hold? I like the first word I like is this one. All right, you get to hold this one up. So we have the memoirs of the Duke de Saint-Simon. This is an abridgment translated by Lucy Norton. Wow. It's enormous. Uh, fantastic three-volume series, though, where we really get to Daddy, delve into yeah, delve into the uh, the Sun King's reign, what French society, the French military, and and Parisian society, Versailles, are all like. And then the Sun King is essentially eclipsed in his old age by by the point Saint Simon is writing. He's uh, in a wheel confined to a wheelchair much of the time, and then we see what happens in the succession. Oh, you have shown your your tattoo sticker from earlier? Uh -huh. And then finally on this shelf, we have the uh, Adam Smith, Inquiry into the Nature and Causes of the Wealth of Nations. Uh -huh. Enormous two-volume, highly annotated series. Uh -huh. So those are some uh, biographies on our bottom shelf. And on the shelf right above it, we have a mixture of two things. I'll go through part of it because I think they they kind of fit into that nonfiction series. So I, I keep uh, some letters by various um, literary figures in here. 
So we have the letters of Rainer Maria Rilke, obviously famous for letters to a young poet. This is a pretty strong volume. It covers uh, 1910 to 1926. Sit up, please. <laughs> Ernest Hemingway's selected letters. Uh, letters and essays of E.B. White. He has a really gorgeous blah, blah, one that he blah, writes blah. to his uh, to his wife shortly after they were married. That is just absolutely beautiful. Selected letters of Raymond Chandler, and then just one I picked up at a book sale last weekend. Uh, letters of John Cheever. So we'll st we'll start with that bookshelf tour, and maybe we'll continue. Should we continue one day? All right. Let's say bye. Bye bye. bye.